Well, welcome to Sunday. The markets and Manly are absolutely cranking. Uh, I know I keep saying it, but it just keeps getting better and better. We're just getting back to normal again and again. It's just fantastic. I mean, it's just, the vibe is incredible. Heaps of people, we've got heaps of stalls, and it just feels amazing, you know? The, the atmosphere is just incredible. If you haven't seen Manly on a good cranking day, I suggest you get down here and have a look. It's just really, really good. So anyway, uh, in this episode, I'm gonna call on all my experience of 10 years of running the markets and 25 years of retail, my own stores. And uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about how to be a stall holder, how to be a good stall holder. And I'm gonna share all the, all the knowledge and secrets I've got. So um, yeah, hopefully uh, current and new stall holders People will uh, learn something and hopefully, yeah, I can help you create a successful business in the markets. So please enjoy. Uh, I'll try and put some subtitles in to make it easier. And let's see how this goes. Welcome to Manly Markets 2095. Manly is the first beach north of Sydney Harbour and can easily be reached by ferry, car or bus. My name is Mark and I've been running the Manly Markets for 10 years now and I have over 30 years retail experience in the surf industry, which has really helped me understand the markets business overall. Each week I'm going to show you all around our markets including how we run them, introduce our storeholders, show you around Manly and interview some locals along the way. Please subscribe and enjoy our weekly shows every Friday. Okay, so here we go. I'm getting serious now. I've got the glasses on. I've got the notes out I'm going to delve into this how to be a storeholder So you've already decided you want to get into markets and uh, you want to be a storeholder. So Let's face it. You probably need to be arty or creative uh, To really make something good for markets people like things that are handmade made by the person on the stall so this is definitely probably the main criteria so if you're not arty or creative then you probably can find something unique that you could sell at the markets you know something that you don't find in shops something you don't find everywhere something from overseas i mean uh, i have a colombian lady who sells colombian products i have a turkish guy who sells his turkish towels and turkish products um, so on i've had other people from other countries so you can find that new invention that's something unique and uh, sell it at market okay so you also need to be a social person uh, you need to be chatty you need to like people you need to like talking to people it's no good being shy sorry if you are shy then maybe this is an opportunity for you to come out of your shell and try and um, you know improve your social skills but you definitely need to be a people's person and enjoy talking to people so that's a must um, you need to have a positive attitude you need to come to the markets every day with a smile on your face happy nature happy about everything even if you've had a rotten night uh, you had an argument with your partner or something like that or your dog ran away sorry you're there for business and people want to see a happy person they don't want to see someone behind a stall with a sad face and uh, I've always thought that um, imagine an actor on stage or on a movie he's carrying baggage from home he's upset it doesn't happen does it they put on a persona for the character be what it is and they just perform so being a storeholder or in retail in a shop it's the same thing you need to be on you need to be happy and you need to put on a good front um, you need to be an organized person you can't be sloppy you need to be on time you need to have everything in order you need your stall to look good you just you need your bookwork you need your business everything to run smoothly pay your bills everything has to be done properly uh, being sloppy just doesn't work you just your customers will notice it um, the markets manager will get the shits with you um, probably other storeholders will get the shits with you so 
be organised, very important. Uh, you must be a cooperative person, patient, flexible, easy going. These are all the attributes that will help you be successful. Um, you need to be a good communicator. You need to be clear and uh, with your communications with the markets manager, i.e. what days you plan to come, um, if something comes up, you need to cancel, you need to make sure you get in touch with that person. I mean, I have storeholders just suddenly don't turn up and you go, contact them, where are you? Oh, I, I couldn't come today. Oh, thanks very much. Remember, uh, a markets manager is probably dealing with a hundred different storeholders on average. Uh, he has a layout that's done to perfection to make sure everyone's happy. It works for the whole market itself and it works for all the people that are coming through. So. You must have good communications. Um, you also must clearly communicate with your customers, you know. So be a good communicator. Um, setup. Um, does your stock and your fit fit into your car that you're going to drive to the market, you know? Um, do a trial run, try and pack your car. Do you need to change your car? You might need to get a van, a specific vehicle for your markets. A lot of my storeholders have a vehicle that is just for their market's work. They have a sedan or whatever for their personal use, but uh, a van is definitely worth getting. Um, make it easy for yourself. That is really the clue. Because you're going to be on your feet all day, and you're going to get up early to get there, set up. And, and also, by the time you're packing up the end of the day, you'll be so glad you made it easy. You can get out of there quick, get home, and then just relax. Um, equipment. Are you going to buy your own gazebo? Are you going to get your own tables? Or are you going to hire them from the market you're going to? Well, maybe in the beginning it's a good idea to hire everything and just see how you go. You know, it's trial and error at start. You don't know exactly how you're going to go. Hopefully you're going to go well. But maybe maybe it's not maybe it's something it's the wrong timing or uh, the wrong product you know a lot of people get excited about their product and I've seen it quite a few times unfortunately where I look at the product and I think what chance has that got of selling minimal chance and of course they turn up they have a go and they're shocked they think oh I love this thing but it just didn't work you know some some things obscure things just won't work at a market so you know, if you want to stick at it, then you're probably going to have to change. Maybe change the whole thing, or maybe just change a few things. Uh, as far as gazebos go, you've got to get a solid gazebo, a commercial gazebo. The best gazebos I've found are the Oztrail Commercial Deluxe. You can get them in 3 meter, 2.4, or even 6 by 3, if you've got a market that'll fit that size, but definitely get Commercial Deluxe. They uh, are the only ones that will put up with the uh, wear and tear of using them every weekend, you know, be it Saturday and Sunday, or once a week. Anything less, uh, the compact or just those cheap Audi ones, sorry, they won't cut it. A puff of wind and down they go. They just, I've seen it time and time again. Uh, the best tables to get are the uh, life, li lifetime um, bifold. Uh, trestle table, uh, it folds in half, very sturdy, um, mine lasts five years, they're amazing and they're the right size, uh, definitely the Bunnings Lifetime Bifold table, get one of those. Um, as far as pricing goes on the gazebos too, online it's probably best, uh, in Australia Tent World or Snowy seem to alternate between who's got the best price but um, yeah sorry don't go direct to Austral you'll pay 300 bucks with the other guys you'll probably pay about 220 sometimes 200 for a three meter one and if you can get the white top uh, you'll let in more light and it'll show your product better um, the blues they're yeah, just a bit dark and, and they do fade so they can look pretty old pretty quick so definitely get the white one um, tablecloths, definitely need tablecloths. And a lot of people I've, in my store uh, markets are using the uh, 
fitted ones, they're um, lycra stretch and um, they tuck them under the feet and some of them are getting uh, their name or their logo or uh, uh, information about the store printed on them. I really recommend that once you're established, once you know you're going to make it, this will help you even more. Definitely get those. Um, signage, you know I always talk about signage, definitely get a good sign made, not too big, you can either attach it to the back of your stall, you don't want a full cover because if it's windy it's just going to blow you away like a sail on a sailboat, so um, get a smaller sign, make sure it says your name, a little short story about what you do, what products you got or handmade, whatever, just, just, just get the message across and um, yeah signage definitely helps because people will read the sign before they come up and see what you're doing and then it just entices them to get more involved remember selling and retail is just like fishing you know a fisherman puts a little bit of bait throws a bit of burley out and then tries to attract the fish well you're doing the same thing with people and customers so you need to use all these little ideas little uh, hooks to uh, get them involved in your store Uh, a good trolley, a good trolley is a must. Uh, usually the distance between your car and the stall could be 30 metres, 50 metres, sometimes 100 metres, just depends. So make sure you've got a good stall. Uh, notice a lot of people are using like a foldable cart on wheels. It's sort of like the old, um, uh, oh, the kids used to use, you know, you pull the kids around in. Um, they're really good. Bunnings again of course, oh, I'm not paid by Bunnings, it just there uh, seem to be the easiest place to get these things from. Um, pricing, this is really important. Okay, uh, you know, we have people that sell items $5, artists and photographers selling items for $3,000, $5,000. It doesn't matter how high you go, it's where you start and everyone needs a low cost item on their stall so that you entice people to come along and have a look at your store they see that they can get something for five ten twenty dollars it's just again fishing it entices people to come and have a look or to just buy something from you you know it's uh, the ikea effect too same thing they've got all these little bins everywhere of all little items supermarkets the same you know cash register they've got all the small ticket items last middle entitlements just to get more money out of you you know you can uh, you can learn from all these guys how to do it yourself